Yellowstone supervolcano, how scientists can predict when the next huge earthquake will strike. It was by Sebastian Ketley on Express UK. Yellowstone, as we know, is a supervolcano. Officials have revealed major earthquakes are a bigger concern than the supervolcano erupting. But how can scientists predict these tremors? Now, we know that we have USGS reporting earthquakes, but the reported earthquakes are a lot less than the recorded earthquakes that seem to be going on continuously. And uh, one of my past videos, we have said that scientists claim that there is a weak spot in Yellowstone, and that is the geysers. The geysers themselves have quakes as they come to erupt, giving out the hydrothermal energy. And also, scientists claim that a supervolcano does not act as a regular volcano would act, and that a nearby earthquake would be enough to rupture the roof of the magma chamber in a supervolcano. So, supervolcanoes are totally different than regular volcanoes. Now, what about the earthquake predictions? A magnitude 7 earthquake is more likely to strike sometime in the future than most people realize. Geologists at Yellowstone National Park say, Yellowstone scientists and United States Geologic Survey, USGS volcano expert Michael Poland said such quakes can happen and will happen in the future. Speaking to USA Today, the Yellowstone geologist said magnitude 7 earthquakes are currently the biggest concern for scientists. And let's remember that a big quake like a 7 magnitude quake also has aftershocks after it, coming after it. A magnitude 7.3 quake last struck the National Park in the summer of 1959. The Yellowstone earthquake triggered devastating landslides near an occupied campsite. It killed 28 people and shifted 80 million tons of rock and soil. The potential destructive force of another such tremor is incredibly terrifying, especially now that Yellowstone's annual visitors are in the millions. So what exactly is being done to predict future cataclysmic earthquakes from claiming more lives? Unfortunately, there's nothing that can be done to predict earthquakes in advance. Geology professor Jamie Farrell of University of Utah says, predicting earthquakes is impossible, but studying past data might point scientists in the right direction. The Yellowstone expert said, the supervolcano complex of Yellowstone is one of the best seismically monitored regions in the world. There are a total of 101 various monitoring instruments dotting the Yellowstone landscape, including an array of cameras, GPS stations, 33 seismometers, temperature gauges, and tilt meters. The network of instruments constantly measures seismic data in the park for signs of ground deformation, seismic activity, and other indicators of tectonic unrest. Now, since July 25th alone, the instruments detected 120 local earthquakes between depths of 3.1 miles to 12.42 miles below the surface. At least four of the recorded quakes were magnitude 6 or over. So they're pretty big. All the tremors are charted out on an interactive Yellowstone National Park, which you can find online. Professor Farrell said, we can't predict them, but by looking at the past data, these earthquakes tend to cluster in areas. Quote, given what's happening in, happened in the past, we can give a probability of having an earthquake over the next X, X amount of time, end quote. There are anywhere between 1,500 to 2,500 annual earthquakes at the supervolcano complex. Uh, well, the last year we had over 2,008 uh, earthquakes well, meaning over a certain amount of magnitude, because they're always happening. As we said, the earthquakes being reported are a lot less than the earthquakes being recorded. But most of these quakes are too weak or too deep to be noticed by anyone other than Yellowstone scientists monitoring the park. If a magnitude 7 earthquake struck today, 
it would likely be much more devastating than the 1959 earthquake. Professor Farrell said it would be a lot worse today than most people, uh, with most people that we have visiting the area. The possibility of it happening is relatively high, said Dr. Poland, when compared to the threat of Yellowstone volcano erupting. The geologists warned unlike the theoretical volcano eruption, a magnitude 7 tremor is something that happens, quote, on a human life scale, end quote. But Professor Farrell argued even the possibility of this happening at all is very unlikely as an event. He said, we like to talk about these big grandiose things happening, like big earthquakes or are the volcano eruptions, but these are highly unlikely events. You're in much more danger driving to Yellowstone than you would be, uh, uh, than uh, you would be by any of these things happening while you're there. Now, most of the deaths that occurred in Yellowstone happened after hapless tourists disturb the park's population of wild bear and bison, or when they get too close to Yellowstone's acidic hot springs and scorching geysers. Now. What about this year, 2019? It could have a devastating effect if it erupts, of course, on the whole of the continental United States. And uh, the likelihood of super volcano erupting this year is a likelihood. The Yellowstone volcano in Wyoming, as we know, is considered a high-risk volcano by the United States Geologic Survey. Experts say if the volcano were even to erupt again, ever, the supervolcano could one day block out the sun and cause a volcanic winter. But the last major eruption at Yellowstone was 640,000 years ago, so is this actually a possibility? Well, it didn't only erupt then, it also erupted about 70,000 years ago, as also nearby volcanoes, the Long Valley Caldera and other volcanoes around Arizona and the, uh, around the area of the Pisgah Volcano Crater, where we have earthquake swarms the past few days. So Yellowstone saw major eruptions, as we said, 640,000 years ago, 2.1 million years ago, and 1.3 million years ago. And the more recent eruption, as we said, 70,000 years ago, that's when lava flowed on the Pitchstone Plateau. But earlier this year, Yellowstone National Park geyser erupted three times in six weeks, sparking fears a huge volcanic eruption was brewing. We're talking about the steamboat geyser, which spewed water 91 meters high, erupting on March 15th, April 19th, and the 25th. Crowds gathering in awe to watch the spectacle as the world's largest active geyser based in Wyoming. And could this mean Yellowstone supervolcano will erupt? Soon, USGS says Yellowstone's volcanic and hydrothermal history suggests the potential for various kinds of eruptions in the future, but the scientific agency predicts the most likely explosion to be hydrothermal, steam, or hot water bursts, rather than lava. Although it's impossible to predict when exactly a volcano will next erupt, scientists are pretty confident a deadly explosion at Yellowstone is not imminent, Michael Poland, the scientist from USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory there, said the geysers in 2008 ramped up activity was not a sign of a major volcanic explosion. Speaking at the time, he said, there is nothing to indicate that any sort of volcanic eruption is imminent. If Yellowstone were to erupt, it would likely produce lava flows of basalt or rhyolite rock. The latter could produce significant volumes of volcanic ash and pumice. And USGS on its website says the least likely but worst case volcanic eruption at Yellowstone would be another explosive caldera forming eruption such as those that occurred 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. However, the probability of such an eruption in any given century or millennium is exceedingly low, much lower than the smaller eruptions mentioned. In 2014, a group of scientists hypothesized what might a Yellowstone supervolcano eruption look like. In the paper they produced, the team predicted the eruption would eject at least 240 cubic miles of ash spread across the United States, which means that millions of people and animals and plants would die because of this.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.